Good morning, y'all, and welcome to Apron Strings. Sure, I'm glad to have all of you in the kitchen with me, and I got a bunch of new faces. Thank you so much for subscribing, and I hope that you'll go back and watch some of the older videos because I've got lots of good food on this channel. I like to cook. I love good southern casseroles and comfort food, and sweets, cakes, cookies, pies, all the good stuff. And I like to garden, too, so... There's a hodgepodge of goodies on here. Today we're going to make a uh, cornbread chicken pot pie. And it's unique and it's different and it's good. So the first thing I have to do, I've got three, three little organic chicken breasts that I got at Costco one time. They had marked the price wrong on them. Remember I told y'all? I save them in the freezer. So I'm going to boil them until they're tender. And uh, I'm going to put a probably a tablespoon of better than uh, chicken bouillon in there to give them some flavor while they're cooking. And then we will get on with the rest of the dish. Okay, I'm just going to guesstimate how much I'm putting in here. Oh, that's beef. I don't want beef. Let me get the chicken. I didn't even read. I just reached. I'm going to cook these about 30 minutes and then I'll check the internal. That's probably closer to two tablespoons. And I just covered my chicken breast with water. That'll just infuse a little more flavor in it because when you don't have any skin and you don't have any bones, there's not a lot of flavor. I think I'd be flavorful because I got lots of skin and lots of bones. Let me put this back behind y'all here in the ice box. Y'all can go ahead and laugh at me. That's what we always called it, and that's what I still call it 95% of the time. I got some scones in the oven, and they're just about done. They're a mix that I get from Kroger that I like. Hear that buzzer? Fixing to butter me some and one and eat it. Let me see if they're done. Yeah, they are. Y'all can wish I'd have showed you this, but it's simple. It's just their Michigan Cherry Almond Scone Mix, private selection from Kroger, and it's so good. So I'm going to butter a couple of these and see if Truly wants one. When the chicken gets boiled and we're ready to go to the next step, I'll be right back. Y'all, it's pretty here today. The sun's shining, and all of that goopy backyard is drying up a little bit, and I just told Troy... I want to get out there and rake a bunch of those, probably got three dump truck loads of leaves in the backyard and get them out of the way so the grass can come up and I'll have a decent yard. But that rain did a number on my backyard. So I need a cup of cheese and I don't quite have a cup so I'm going to grate some right quick. That is a little grater from Pampered Shelf. They, they have one similar. This is a, probably a discontinued model that I've had a long time. I need a little bit more. You can't have too much cheese. A cup always needs a heat cup, doesn't it? I'm just going to put all of it in there, and I'll have it when I need it here in a little bit. Okay, the chicken's still cooking. I'm just getting all my prep work done. I'm going to have to chop up some onion, and uh, I'll be back in just a minute. If you're a longtime subscriber, you've heard me tell you this tip before, but when you get your celery from the store, if you will dry it really well and wrap it in tin foil and put it in your crisper drawer, it'll keep a long time without spoiling. 
I threw away so much celery before I learned this tip. So just wrap it in foil real good and tight. Put it back in the crisper and it'll keep. I got some out for today. I'm going to go ahead and chop up my celery. And uh, some green onions and some regular onion. Get it in little strips so that'll make it easier to chop it small. If you don't like celery, just leave it out. I have some celery that I pressure can, and I can stir it into stuff, and it just blends, and you don't see it, but the flavor's there. Okay, there's one rib of celery. And I'm just going to do some green onion blades. I'm not going to measure. Probably about a half a cup. And then some what's left of the whites. I took some off because I'm going to plant it to grow me some more green onions. I'm just going to put them all in that cup, let them rest a spell until I chop my white onion. Be back in a minute and get busy on that. Hey y'all, I got my chicken done and shredded. I've got a cup of cheese that I grated while ago to finish out my cup. I've got some just regular yellow onion chopped. Um, the recipe didn't call for onion, but I'm going to add some onion. So I've got about three-fourths of a cup of onion. And then I've got a half a cup of celery and a half a cup of green onion blades chopped to go in it. A can of cream of mushroom and a can of cream of chicken soup. It calls for some milk. Now I want to show y'all, I might have told you before, but just in case I didn't. Dollar Tree has this Chef Stable whole milk in these cartons, and it has the Best Buy uh, information on the top. I keep these because when I run out of milk, if I need to make something, this is wonderful. And I'm going to tell you, you can use it to replace evaporated milk in a recipe because that's kind of what it tastes like. So just a heads up, it's $1.29 now for a container, but it's great to have in your pantry in case of an emergency when you run out of milk and you need some and you don't want to have to take time to mix up powdered milk. Just a heads up on something that I've enjoyed knowing about. Let me slip it back in the ice box here. So I'm going to add my chicken to my cheese. I think I better get a bigger bowl. I don't think that bowl is going to be big enough. Get it out of the way. I don't need to waste anything. I like you, Johnny. That bowl, these are cheap little bowls that I bought at the Dollar Tree, and uh, they keep getting a hole in the bottom. So that one's trash now. But it's good while it lasted for a long time. I'm going to use my Swedish dough hook because I can just mix this up and it won't get all glucked up in the tines of it like it would on a whisk or something like that. And you could pick up a rotisserie chicken and make this pretty quick and easy to do. I'm going to add in my onions, both kinds. And you could uh, take your onions, of course, and saute them and um, make them go ahead and be a little softer. Or if you cut them up ahead of time and put them in the freezer, they're softer to start with when you start to put them inside of something. Okay, I need a can of cream of mushroom and a can of cream of chicken.
Y'all, I like cornbread better than I like pie crust. So this one is right down my alley for a pot pie. I'm just getting all the goodie out. Stir it around. Just try to get it all incorporated good. And three fourths of a cup of milk. y'all know that I'm going to add onion and garlic powder. Add a teaspoon of garlic. Add a tablespoon of onion powder. Got some more stuff to mix up to go with it, so let me Get everything situated and we'll get to working on that. We need to put what we just mixed up. I've sprayed with Pam my uh, pan here. And I'm just using a stoneware just because it looks a little prettier. And I'm going to get this into the pan and then we're going to top it with our cornbread mix. Y'all see, I'm just spreading it around in the bottom. As level as you can get it. Okay, now we're gonna, I'm gonna rinse my bowl out and we're gonna mix up our topping and go on top of it. Okay, in the microwave, I'm gonna melt two tablespoons of butter. We need a can of cream style corn. One egg. Keep that a little corn roll here. Put a, a bad little piece of corn in there. I'm gonna get my butter. We're gonna need my melted butter, an egg, a third of a cup of sour cream, and I've got that. A can of cream style corn, some onion and garlic powder, and salt and pepper, and a box of Jiffy cornbread mix. And I don't have Jiffy, but I've got Morrison, so I'm gonna use that one. Let me get the butter. Now, as y'all can see, and the ones of you that are here often know, I don't have a get it over with quick and just run through the recipe. We visit, and y'all are actually doing what I'm doing in the kitchen. It don't just magically appear over here from the microwave. You have to step over there and get it. So, if you like channels where you get to cook and talk and listen and visit, well, this is the place for you to be. I've got my sourdough over there making so I can make me some bread today. I'm going to be busy. I 
and get that to mix in there. And the recipe card will have the amounts on it. Now you could add, like I've got some freeze-dried hatch peppers, and I could run out there and get a few of them and powder them in here. That would give it some zing, but I'm not going to do that. But see, anytime you're making something like this, make it your own. A casserole is basically using what you have in the kitchen to make a meal. Things that you like. If you have a base to work from, then put whatever you like in it. I could add uh, frozen mixed vegetables to this. There's all kinds of add-ons that you can do to make it something uh, different. You could put it in little individual tart pans and give everybody their own little cornbread pot pie. And for those of you that are new, I got this at Sur La Table, but you can get them, they say, on Amazon now. And it's so much easier than twisting and twisting and twisting to grate your pepper. And this that I'm using to stir is called a Swedish dough hook. And it's like the beaters on a mixer. Everything runs through these holes instead of globbing up like a whisk. And it's great for mixing breads and thicker stuff. Okay, let me get my cornbread mix. Got it mixed up good. Okay, we're ready to put it around on the top and make our pie. And now what I'm going to do is just take this cornbread mix and put it on the top and spread it around. This is good for potluck. What I'm going to serve with it, I have collard greens that I cooked a few days ago that's in the refrigerator. And I'm going to um, get them out. And yesterday I grilled ribs on my pellet grill. And I have uh, a little bit of potato salad left. So we're going to have this with greens and potato salad. Now if I didn't have those greens, I'd either do a green salad or I would make uh, green beans to go with it. That would just, that's just my choice. Okay folks, you know the before and after pictures? That's heavy. There's the before picture. I'm going to get it in a 350 degree oven uh, until it's brown, I think probably 25, 30 minutes. And then we'll bring it back and let it cool a little bit and I'll dish some up and i taste of it. Hope y'all want to make you some. There we have it. So let me get my timer set and I'll be back in just a few minutes. Okay, y'all, I got it out of the oven. See, it's a bubbling on the side. I actually cooked it 50 or 55 minutes to get it brown on the top. And I did kick my temperature up to 375. So when you start your oven, do it at 375. And I'm going to let it cool a little bit and then I'm going to dish some up. Okay, y'all see how well it holds its shape? It's still very hot. And I dipped a portion up and I've got it over here in the plate cooling a little bit. And I did lick the spoon where I dished it up. And oh my goodness, it's delicious. All right, y'all, I'm gonna taste this stuff. It's hot and it might burn my mouth, but I get some iced tea if it does. Two thumbs up. Let me remind you again, don't add salt to it. Your cream of mushroom, cream of chicken soup has salt in it. The cornbread mix has salt in it. And the cheese is salty. So don't add any salt. But just as it is, it's really good. And I think I probably baked it. Of course, I started at 350, but I think, and I did it for 50, 55 minutes. So 375 
45 to 50 minutes, but just bake it until your cornbread is done and brown on the top. And because everything in it, except the egg and the, <coughs> you know, it's done when the cornbread's done, the egg's going to be done. So, I hope y'all are using some of the recipes. I know a lot of my new subscribers, so glad y'all are here, are commenting on older videos that you're trying the recipes, y'all. I got 600 and something, I think, videos. There's a lot of good food on this channel. There's side dishes, there's salads, there's entrees, there's meats, there's desserts, all kinds of good stuff. So if you're just in a qualm about what you're going to cook, would you scroll back through the videos and find one you like the, the looks of and make it for your family? There's, there's a lifetime of good recipes on there because these are things I've grown up with, a lot of them. And I know they're good. Well, let me talk to you just a minute because everybody don't watch to the end, but those of you that do, you need to hear this. <clears throat> Get you some things ahead. Prices are just crazy going up. And it's obvious we're not going to get any raises on our jobs. So while you can buy it at a lesser price right now, get you some extra staples on your in your pantry and then be wise with how you use them and don't waste them. I'm afraid it's going to get to the time that some of the shelves are empty. And if you haven't been wise and stored up a little bit ahead of time, your family might be hungry. And let me just tell you again, the people who are buying up a little bit extra and you know they are, but you aren't, don't go knocking on their door when things crumble or if things crumble. They're not saving that for you. They're doing it for their family. Remember the little red hen? Who will help me thresh this wheat? Who will help me bake this cake? Nobody wanted to help, but when it got done, they all wanted some. She told them, no, my chicks and I will eat this by ourselves. And that's how life is going to be. If you want to provide for your family for the future, just in case, you better start doing it. Because people are not going to feed the neighborhood because they were wise and they listened. So, get you some stuff ahead. Staple stuff, I've told you. Pinto beans and rice will fill you up and keep you full. Oatmeal will keep you full. Get you some powdered milk and some oatmeal. They sell powdered butter and all kinds of stuff that's canned at these different sites online that will keep for years if you don't open it and for a year if you do open it. So there's ways to put stuff in your pantry that will, you know, provide for you later on. So be thinking about it. Just because we're not under the lockdown and all of that, that don't mean things aren't going on behind the scene that would scare the bee withers out of us if we knew it. Yeah, I trust the Lord. And you're not supposed to have... Fear, and I'm not saying I'm trembling with fear. I'm just saying I imagine there's stuff going on that we really don't want to know about. Plans for our future that we don't have any part of planning. Y'all do your part. Stock your pantry. Make sweet memories with your family, with your kids. You know, the kids nowadays will never know the childhood I had. I had a wonderful childhood, and I didn't have a computer. I wouldn't trade my childhood for today for anything. Make good memories with them today because you might be glad to look back on them before too long. The good Lord bless and keep y'all. I'm going to try to be back here in a couple of days with a video. I'm enjoying subbing at the school and I'm working some weeks every day of the week. So yeah, it's it's uh, took up some of my time that I was doing videos, but I'm going to keep doing videos. And I'll try to be here two to three times a week with something really good for you. And then I'll go have fun with the kids on the side. The good Lord bless you, and I'll be back pretty soon.